Hi, everyone, and thanks a lot for joining us. I'm DeMarco Morgan. President Trump is back in the U.S. following his first one-on-one -on -one meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. He arrived back in Washington Monday night after meeting with Putin in Helsinki, Finland, for about two hours. The two also held bilateral meetings. President Trump said he did bring up Russian election interference, but that President Putin was, quote, powerful in his denial. That and other comments from President Trump have sparked swift backlash from officials in Washington. The director of national intelligence responded to Mr. Trump saying in part, quote, we have been clear in our assessments of Russian meddling in the 2016 election and their ongoing pervasive efforts to undermine our democracy. CBS Evening News anchor Jeff Glor sat down with the president ahead of the summit and asked about his relationship with Putin. Here's what he had to say. President Bush said that uh, he, he saw into his soul. I think he came to regret that. You said that Putin toyed with Obama. How do you ensure that things are different in this administration? I don't know. I, look, I've met him two times, two and a half times. Uh, most of you people were there when I met him. Uh, I think that uh, I may have a very good relationship, and I think I may have a very bad relationship with him. I have no idea. All right, the president also suggested the investigation into Russian election meddling is damaging U.S.-Russia relations more than the meddling itself. Our Major Garrett has more. Getting along with Russia is a good thing, not a bad thing. After meeting one-on-one -on -one with Russian President Vladimir Putin for more than two hours, a first for an American president, there was yet another first. President Trump appeared to side with Putin over U.S. intelligence agencies on Russian interference in the 2016 election. So I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. All 17 U.S. intelligence agencies concluded that the Russian government directed cyber attacks on members of the Democratic Party. That view is also shared by bipartisan committees in the House and Senate and the president's own director of national intelligence, Dan Coats. All I can do is ask the question. My people came to me, Dan Coats came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. Very well. That wonderment not only conflicts with his own administration, it overlooks Friday's special counsel indictment of 12 Russian intelligence officers for hacking, fraud and conspiracy in the 2016 political cyber attacks. The most detailed and Kremlin-focused account yet. Mr. Trump even appeared taken with Putin's suggestion, one rife with potential security pitfalls, that Russia's intelligence services could assist the special counsel Russia probe. He offered to have the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer. In exchange, Putin said the U.S. could help apprehend Americans wanted by Russian authorities. Such a quid pro quo would elevate Russia from adversary to cyber ally, a startling turn that drew bipartisan rebukes in Washington. I beat Hillary Clinton easily. The president frankly, continued to deny campaign collusion with Russians and dismiss suggestions. Russian interference gave him an edge over Hillary Clinton. Putin, whom U.S. intelligence asserts ordered the election meddling, nevertheless admitted he wanted Mr. Trump to win. The president said U.S.-Russia relations were at an all-time low and in part blamed the special counsel investigation. I think that the, the probe is a disaster for our country. I think it's kept us apart. It's kept us separated. And Major joins us now from Helsinki. Major, always good to see you. The first question the president tweeted on his way home Monday, uh, saying, quote, as I said today and many times before, I have great confidence in my intelligence people. However, I also recognize that in order to build a brighter future, we cannot exclusively focus on the past. As the world's two largest nuclear powers, we must get along. Is that the president's new strategy for getting the past and getting along with Russia? Well, if it's a new strategy, it doesn't have anything to do with the transcript of today's press conference, because when the president was asked about the Russian meddling, a good portion of his answer was devoted to what? The past, meaning the 2016 election and how we beat Hillary Clinton. So if the president is telling the country, well, of course I have great confidence. I just don't want to focus on the past. Well, look at his answers today here in Helsinki. They were rooted in his sense of 
this victorious path over passed over Hillary Clinton and that being what's most important about the campaign not anything related to either possible collusion or actual Russian meddling in the 2016 election so that may be a defensive recalibrated sort of tweet from the president flying back to Washington possibly seeing the coverage, knowing he's getting a lot of criticism, not from what he would regard and maybe the White House might regard as the usual partisan suspects, but those who are close to him want to see him do well. People like Neil Cavuto on Fox, people like Newt Gingrich, the former House Speaker, and others who have said, Mr. President, you've crossed the line here and you need to fix this and fix this sooner rather than later. Major, the president's comments come as the U.S. charged a Russian national for acting as an unregistered foreign agent. Uh, she said to have tried to establish a, quote, back channel between the Trump campaign and Russia. What's the significance here? Well, we have to look at the indictment itself and the, uh, the charges. Maria Butina is her name. Alexander Torshin is this Russian banker with ties to Vladimir Putin. There have been some allegations and some circumstantial evidence that they were working in concert to either create back channel communications, possibly funny, funnel money into the U.S. election in 2016, money that would have either been to the benefit of the Trump campaign directly or might have benefited it indirectly. All of those things are being pursued. This is, I would say, significant in the sense that more evidence is being collected about these ties and these actions, and it may represent a new legal front in the 2016 election and Russian involvement, money, Putin, allies, someone illegally acting in the United States outside of the registered uh, agent law. All of these things might constitute a new front, which could cre create legal problems, not only for those named, but larger institutions. The pro-gun group named is the National Rifle Association. None of that has manifested yet, but it is something definitely to keep an eye on. We also want to point out there have been several calls for Trump aides to resign following uh, the summit. What are we hearing now about how they and other White House staffers will sort of, uh, how they feel about the meeting and how it went? Well, there's certainly a sense of absorbing the moment and trying to cope with the moment. I can tell you that's not unusual working in the Trump White House. I don't know of anyone specifically who has contemplated or threatened or any kind of resignation chatter. I know there was some fear that today's press conference and the way it was digested by the director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, that wouldn't go over well and that he might resign. He didn't. He just put out a statement saying, we gather the intelligence, we know what's true, we tell the president what's true, and we're going to continue to do that. That was him speaking on behalf of his institution and all the intelligence gathering agencies that are part of the director of national intelligence umbrella. So I don't have anything about someone thinking about contemplating or threatening to resign. I do know that there is a concerted effort to get the president to clarify, dramatically clarify, and essentially, if not renounce, so dramatically correct his statements here in Helsinki in the next 24 to 48 hours, that if that doesn't happen, maybe some of that dialogue will get more serious. In an interview with Fox News, Putin was asked if he had any information on President Trump. Let's listen to what he had to say. We don't have anything on them, and there can be anything on them. I don't want to insult President Trump when I say this, and I may come, come as rude. But before he announced that he will run for presidency, he was of no interest for us. He's a, he was a rich person, but, well, there's plenty of rich persons in the United States. He was in the construction business. He organized the beauty pageants. But no, it would never occur to anyone that he would think of running for president. He never mentioned his political ambitions. It sounds like it's another nonsense. All right, Major, final question for you. What, if anything, does this indicate about his relationship with the president? <laughs> Well, uh, to say he was in the construction business, he ran beauty pageants, that would not be the way Donald Trump would describe his career. It's not the way he's described his career. It's not the way he sees himself, and it's not the way he wants to be seen. That is an intentional effort on Vladimir Putin's part to say exactly what he said. I'm being rude here, intentionally rude. I am essentially describing 
the president of the United States as someone who was of no interest to Russian intelligence, insignificant in the business community, and someone who was in construction and beauty pageants. The word I think I'm looking for is ouch. <laughs> A big ouch right there. All right, Major Garrett reporting tonight from Helsinki. Major, thank you. Sure.